Whoa, whoa, Slammiversary. I did this joke last year. Slammiversary is back again, and very similar to the 2020 events, there is rumblings of debuts and or homecomings at this weekend's event. That mysterious trailer that dropped that hints all manner of people, and that plus the, the sheer amount of releases and no compete clauses bouncing around the free agency at the moment, we thought it pertinent to take a look at some of the names that could be turning up at the Impact Zone Maggle this weekend. We're gonna rate all of them on the thermometer. Cold being no chance Sundance, lukewarm being Marinettis, maybe, and hot being you might as well buy them a pint at the bar for afterwards. They will definitely be there. Probably. Let's start with a name that was very heavily featured in the initial trailers that dropped the other month, that being Samoa Joe. You cannot write the history of Impact Wrestling or TNA Wrestling without mentioning Samoa Joe. Multiple time champion across many divisions within that company. Had some iconic matches and moments in there as well. And when he was let go from the commentation station on Monday Night Raw, he seemed a bit of a shoe in to step back into the Impact zone and cause some eruptions. However, that doesn't look like it's happening as he is returning to uh, a smaller location, that being the Capital Wrestling Center. And he's part of NXT. As you and I know, we saw him getting into a carry and cross the other day. I'm pretty sure that we can start this off by saying that Samoa Joe is cold on the thermometer. I doubt we are going to see Joe in Slammiversaries in any way, shape or form this weekend. However, there was a few other things that popped up in that video. Not so much pictures of people, but more icons that suggest people. The Australian flag suggests not just an icon, but maybe some folk that are inspirational. That's right. The former Iconics, now known as the Inspiration, are one of those names bouncing around for Slammiversary this weekend. Uh, we, we've seen online uh, that Jesse McKay and Casey Cassidy have said farewell to Billy Kay and Peyton Royce, their characters respectively from WWE, and they are beginning a new era going forward. Uh, the Iconics' time in WWE, it's just a massive missed opportunity. Just naturally funny, gifted performers, former women's tag team champions in there as well, made a living out of making people backstage corpse in the process. When they split up the Iconics, we were shocked. When they sacked the Iconics, we were dumbfounded. There has to be a home for both of these amazing performers. And they have said, look, they're up for everything. They're ready to go. They need a sponsor in order to work in America and make that happen. And I can't help but feel that Impact Wrestling could become that sponsor. I am saying that it's going to be hot on the thermometer for the inspiration, formerly the Iconics. Now, obviously, there are travel issues getting to and from Australia right now. Uh, I, so whether we see them in per hopefully we see them in person, that'd be cool. But at the very least, I think a video to announce their arrival within the company when things are good, like, I feel like something like that. I believe that they have a future as part of Impact Wrestling. I feel like they would be a gift to the Knockouts division and the Knockouts tag team division. And you don't have to go to journalism for that. Talking of flags, the Australian flag, of course, being what made us all think, oh, they're definitely coming in, the Iconics. Uh, the Mexican flag was featured in one of the trailers that got us thinking about two people. First of all, Andrade El Idolo was uh, in the conversation. He was let go from WWE after he demanded it over and over and over again. He was released from his contract. Not a happy camper being there. Not long after that, he arrived at All Elite Wrestling as the, the, as the star for... Vicky Guerrero to manage to great success, potentially becoming uh, AEW's next big power couple. And does this rule out him turning up in Impact Wrestling? After all, that forbidden door has been swinging off the hinges lately. Uh, it doesn't rule it out, but I don't think it's happening. I think Andrade has plans uh, that, that don't involve Impact Wrestling. And I think his plans involve staying the course in All Elite Wrestling. So I think he would be, he'd be great to be there. It doesn't make it impossible, 
but I don't see a viable place for him in Impact Wrestling when he is so focused on AEW right now. There is another name associated with the Mexican flag, I do believe, and that would be another former WWE star in Kalisto. So Kalisto was let go from WWE back in April. He, he was a, a champion on multiple occasions within that company, and I feel like despite that, we never truly got to see everything that Kalisto had to offer, and I feel like he's got a lot in the tank. It was the other day that he announced online that Kalisto is no more, and he is now going under the ring name of Samurai Del Sol. Pretty much a free bird now as to what he can do since he was let go in April. That's about 90 days, isn't it? Something like that. So there is a strong possibility that we could be adding a Samurai Del Sol to maybe an Ultimate X match on the weekend. I'm putting him as hot. I genuinely think we are gonna see the artist formerly known as Kalisto appear as part of Slammiversary. And I think going forward, he will be a really great fit for that X division. I think there's a lot, he has a lot to offer a company like Impact Wrestling does Kalisto. And I think he wants that platform to prove what he can do. Another star that could be walking down the aisle for Slammiversary is somebody who last time they did that were left ditched at the aisle. I am of course talking about the artist formerly known as the hot mess, Laurel Van Ness. Chelsea Green. Chelsea Green was a character that really stood out in TNA wrestling and it was all going fine for Van Ness until she got left at the altar by Braxton Sutter because love wins apparently. <laughs> uh, she became just she became this radio rental uh, ditched bride with lipstick smudged, always wearing the bride gown, running around with a bottle of, bottle of shampoos. Oh, it was quite the sight. She would eventually become the knockouts champion. She'd eventually end up in WWE. Uh, a run that was really cut short due to injury and then obviously as we know she was let go. Now Chelsea Green has since re-emerged despite the fact that she's been having surgery and she's not been able to compete. She has been confirmed for the Ring of Honor Women's World Championship tournament. Does this rule out an appearance for Impact Wrestling as well? I'm putting her lukewarm on the thermometer. I think that the idea of of Chelsea Green wrestling for at Slammiversary isn't likely, but because that relationship with the company is still, is, you know, is, is hopefully still strong, I love the idea of just having Laurel Van Ness run through the crowd during a match, <laughs> just like the old days. That's all right. Just one more time for old time's sake. What do we say? More former Impact Wrestling slash TNA Wrestling stars to talk about in a little bit, but how about somebody who has never been a part of the company, kind of, sort of. So uh, during one of the early trailers, we saw the word forgotten appear, suggesting that the Forgotten Sons could be making an appearance at uh, Slammiversary. So we know for a fact that uh, Jackson Riker stayed with WWE when Steve Cutler and Wesley Blake were cut. And Wesley Blake has said on multiple occasions he'd love to uh, reignite that tag partnership with, with Murphy. He'd love to reignite that tag partnership with, with, with Steve Cutler. And we have seen Steve Cutler turn up in Impact Wrestling now as Steve Macklin starting at his own thing there. Does this mean that we will see Wesley Blake there as well? I'm saying cold on Wesley Blake on this occasion, for now at least anyway. I think Macklin's very much carving out his own thing as a solo wrestler. I think it'd be weird to suddenly bring in Wesley Blake. So I don't think that's really happening despite the fact that there is there's a, there's, there's a keenness to reconnect. I'm not saying it'll never happen, but I don't think we're seeing Wesley Blake at Slammiversary. The trailer also hinted at some New Japan stars that have had a bit of history with the company as well. We saw clips of Naito during those trailers. Yes, the former IWGP heavyweight champion had himself a run with the company as part of No Limit and they had a short but passionate affair having some matches with Team 3D and some matches with the Motor City Machine Guns. Naito losing clean to Kevin Nash. That was the thing that happened. Ah, oh, good times. Uh, are we going to see Naito at the show? I, I think this is cold. I think that for even though some old wounds with New Japan have healed, uh, I don't think 
this is something that's likely to happen at the show. I think that Naito is doing his own thing as part of uh, New Japan, and obviously travel between New Japan and America is quite difficult right now as well, as it is with most places. Um, so I can't see Naito being a part of this. Staying with New Japan, another wrestler from that company uh, that was teased is Okada. And when we talk about the old wounds not healing, uh, I think it was Okada's run with with Impact Wrestling that may have caused those wounds in the first place. Uh, it's memorable for less than grand reasons as a big part of his run he was cosplaying as uh, a character from the Green Hornet, sort of like the, 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 the sidekick to Samoa Joe, Okato as he was known. It just, you, why you've got the greatest wrestler in the world and you've, you've got him playing this, this weird Green Hornet-esque character. This is apparently what led New Japan to go, we're good for working with you guys for a while. Thanks, thanks, though. I mean, Okada coming back as Okada and writing those wrongs isn't a terrible idea, but I don't think it's happening. I think this is cold on the thermometer again as well. I don't think we're going to see uh, anything to do with um, Okada at the show as well, but I think it's nice to tease it. Uh, another name teased from Japan in some of these early trailers is the great Muta, who has had a little bit of l'histoire uh, with Impact Wrestling. There's a match you can watch with him and Mr. Anderson for free on their YouTube channel right now. And he's had a little bit of a renaissance as Keiji Muto, as, uh, as we've seen. He became a champion this year because, you know, why not? The last 18 months have been a hell of a ride. Why not? I don't think we're going to see the great Muta popping up, though, at... Uh, at uh, Slammiversary. Ah, that's cold. That's cold. It's, it's a nice idea, just for fun. It's cold, though. Sorry. Let's move from Japan to Europe, where the Axeman, Axel Tischer, has had his name thrown about. Formerly Alexander Wolf in NXT and WWE. He was part of Sanity on NXT. He was part of Imperium in NXT UK as well. And now he's, he wasn't, he's not there at all. He got let go. So his name came up in conversation. Uh, we won't take too long on him. As much as I love Alexander Wolfe, the Axeman Axel Tischer, as he's now known, uh, as much as, as he told me in Desert Island Graps, that what Eric Young is doing with Violent by Design is kind of a spiritual success to Sanity, the group he was in. As much of all those things are happening, I don't see uh, Wolf being a part of the show this weekend. He is down to make his return to European wrestling. He's going to be doing Dub X Dub's anniversary show in August. And he has said, again, in that episode of Desline Graps that we did, he's keen to, to reinvent European wrestling. And I think that's where his passion lies. So I don't think we're going to see him as part of Impact. I think he's got big plans for Europe. So it's a cold on Alexander Wolf. Axeman, Axel, Tisha, whichever you prefer. Before we get to the final few names teased in those trailers, there's been some releases from WWE that weren't featured in the trailers, and they have been connected a little bit with Impact Wrestling and some of the surprises that are apparently planned for Slammiversary. Braun Strowman being one of those ones as well. Sent away from WWE not long after WrestleMania Backlash. He is certainly uh, a, a, an imposing figure that you would love to have on your roster. He shaved his head, he shaved his beard, and he's put his tariff up. He's quite an expensive wrestler. I don't think Impact are going to be paying for Braun Strowman to come in and give somebody those hands, so I'm going to say it's cold on Braun Strowman for this weekend. Ruby Riot is another name that was thrown around. So when it was announced that Diana Peraza was having a, a, a match against a mystery opponent this weekend for the Knockouts Championship, a lot of conversation started, started about Ruby Riot, who was very well liked in the WWE locker room, and her being let go was incredibly heartbreaking. Many people, including Liv Morgan, saying wherever she goes next, uh, the company will be lucky to have her. However, Fightful have ruled out Ruby Riot, now known as Ruby Soho being a part of Slammiversary this weekend. That doesn't seem like something on the cards right now for Ruby. Uh, maybe down the road, I think she's a great addition to that knockouts division, but certainly not a part of Slammiversary, so she's, she's a cold one as well. Mojo Rawley, however, 
isn't as cold as you might think, right? Because he has stayed hype despite being released from WWE. And he's been teasing that there are big plans afoot. He's got a movie coming out called Snake Eyes. Uh, on Chris Van Vliet's podcast the other day, Mojo was saying that he, he is, he's got a really strong sort of financial background and a background in investments. And he talked about how he loved to, behind the scenes in WWE, help wrestlers with sorting their money out, getting finances in order, helping book travel and cars and stuff. Impact would really go for a guy like that, who has name value in the ring and behind the scenes can be kind of like a, like a locker room advisor, that sort of thing. So I'm gonna say lukewarm on Mojo being a part of Slammiversary this weekend. I feel like there's, there's some energy that he might bring to Impact Wrestling in the ring and outside it. So those other names featured in the trailer. Let's go hardcore country. Mickey James quite prominently featured in those Slammiversary trailers. A career renaissance was had by Mickey James when she rocked up in TNA. We saw her become a three-time knockouts champion and mix it up with young stars and veteran stars as well. And now she's back on the independent circuit, as we heard, like she's doing stuff with NWA. She's a big part of their women's pay-per-view next month. She's really keen just to get out there and get amongst it again. And I reckon Mickey James is pretty hot on the thermometer. Like this open challenge that we mentioned earlier for Diana Peralta's knockout women's championship. I think that Mickey James is a hot contender to be thrown into the match, thrown into the mix straight away against Perrazzo, somebody I think that will get a really wonderful homecoming, especially in Nashville, someone like Mickey with that country background. I think there's, there's money in bringing Mickey back. It's a head-turning return this weekend. She's hot on the scale. So that is all the names for Slammiversary. Wait, no, no. Did we miss one? Yes, 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 we did. We can't leave without talking about Daniel Bryan. All right, Daniel Bryan walked away from WWE after he lost his match to Roman Reigns on SmackDown, wasn't looking to sign a new contract and is now a free agent, kind of can go as and where he pleases. So Impact um, teased this, putting a very obvious yes into the trailer. We all kind of made the connection there. Now, it's not the first time that conversations have started between Impact Wrestling and Daniel Bryan. You see, when WWE briefly cut ties with Daniel Bryan in 2010, uh, Impact Wrestling approached him and said, ah, do you fancy coming over here? Of course, we would see Daniel Bryan make his return to WWE in time for SummerSlam that year, so that never really happened. But the fact the conversation happened so quickly uh, is intriguing. So now he's a free agent. Daniel Bryan, the American Dragon, Brian Danielson, however you want to call him, has made it clear that he could quite happily ride off into the sunset now. He's made all the money that he needs to make, but he is intrigued in wrestling for other promotions. He said that very loudly. And for Daniel Bryan, it doesn't matter what the promotions are, he just wants to mix it up with different people. Which is why I'm actually gonna put Daniel Bryan as lukewarm, as, as, to, as somebody who could potentially be turning up at Slammiversary. I know that seems a little bit wild. I know you might dismiss that outright and go, go back to bed, Tom. You clearly had too much of the old sherbet dib dabs, but I don't think this is out of the realms of possibility, which is why I'm not gonna put hot or cold. I'm gonna put lukewarm, right? Daniel Bryan has said that he, it's not about the money anymore. It's about going out there and wrestling and he wants to wrestle for other promotions. And Impact Wrestling must be appealing to a guy like Daniel Bryan. Like a company that has a lot of younger guys on the roster and some veteran guys in there as well. And a lot of opponents he's not faced for the very first time. So to have him rocking up and helping some of those younger guys along and helping that promotion uh, to, to grow even further, I, I can't see why you, why you wouldn't want that. I'm putting him lukewarm. I don't think it's out of the realms of possibility that Daniel Bryan might turn up at Slammiversary. Fight me. So those are all the names. If there's any I've missed, if there's any maybe that you think might rock up in Nashville that I've not mentioned, why not pop them down in the comments below and we'll compare some notes, shall we? Either way, it's gonna be a really fun show, Slammiversary. I am excited. Hope you are too. Stay safe. Love you, bye.